Good day to you wherever you are on the surface of the earth, whatever time of year or day it is to you. We've been talking most recently about taking rest that we've gotten from God in solitude, precious time with Him, into the rest of our lives and our active lives with our families, with our work, with our leisure activities, wherever we are, to be a person at ease with God, at rest and at peace with ourselves, and ready to bring peace into other situations of life. This is session 12. It is entitled, Commuting Between Two Poles, Private Life and Public. In the book of Mark, we read that Jesus went back and forth between solitude and activity in his public ministry. He said to his disciples, teaching them the same rhythm of life, then because so many people were coming and going that they didn't have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Obviously, it wasn't just about eating, but it was getting some rest, and food came with that time of rest. So there were so many people on one hand, and they had had enough, perhaps been drained by the audience or the crowds, and now it was time to be refreshed in a place of solitude, not just alone as individuals, but to collectively as a community. They went to be uh, with their Lord to have some sessions together apart from the public. Now this idea of commuting is an interesting one. We commute uh, to and from work in many segments of societies. We have cars and of course as there are more cars on the streets there is more time spent commuting. You are stuck in traffic jams, the traffic, the cars move slowly, so there's a long commute, even though the miles may be few between home and work. So time is spent there. But the object is to get either to one destination or the other, be it work or home or some other location. So commuting is something that's pretty well known universally around the globe these days, especially in cities. And commuting may take place as well on vacations and busy roads or highways as people get to weekend spots or vacation spots and they may travel even several days to get to them. But the idea is there's the public life and there's the private life. And this has gone on for centuries. Now where I'm from, from Minnesota, uh, sometimes the winters are so bad that people commute by snowmobile. Actually this is a bit of a, a joke. These are funny characters there on their snowmobile. But there are times truly when we have lots of snow like other parts of the world, Russia, where actually you can't get out in a car. Uh, the cars are blocked on the roads and so people actually take a snowmobile into town. Maybe a, a, a doctor in a rural location will take a snowmobile to get to the hospital for those in need. Commuting between two poles. Again, these two poles are the private life and the public life. And it's unfortunate when someone gets stuck between the two, but it's really unfortunate when one has no private life whatsoever and they're swallowed up by, by the public, by people, by pleasing people. And we have here uh, crowds of people illustrated and then there's a fellow, he's really in a private situation, he's on an island, perhaps he didn't choose to be there, and he can't even find power for his laptop, or I should say it's a desktop, under his palm tree. Well, you get the pi picture. You can be at one extreme or the other. There are those who never break from the crowds, and they always seek out a crowd, and they cannot uh, stand being alone for whatever reason. They have to be with people. And then there are those who go aside and they stay in a very private location for several hours, even days, and the rest of their life. They choose that kind of environment where they don't get in a crowd at all. Well, I believe Jesus would have us mix with people, go to crowds or at least uh, groups of people 
for our work and ministry and so forth because he loves people he wants to use us and he wants us to be those instruments of peace bringing into the disturbed restless world that surrounds us but the power is going back and forth and finding ourselves in precious places of solitude with him we have a quote here from a fellow named Parker Palmer who has written a book about the active life he talks about the two extremes. And I'm going to ask my wife Lois to read very simply uh, this passage of, of not scripture, but a quote from Parker Palmer. Many of us know what it is to live lives not of action, but of frenzy, to go from day to day exhausted and unfulfilled by our attempts to work, create, and care. Many of us know the violence of an active life, a violence we sometimes inflict on ourselves and sometimes inflict on our world. It's good to have an active life. As an individual, a person, a pastor, I do not promote monasticism. That is where people go off and they never enter into the public world, or at least very seldom. I don't believe that's God's will for us, but rather to have very vital times of quietness and solitude and then take that rest from being in solitude with God and we're okay with that. We're at peace with quietness and solitude and then we go back into the public and I just believe that this, this is what uh, Jesus modeled uh, before the disciples and for us today. So we do go back and forth, not getting stuck as some people are in total solitude the rest of their life or uh, constantly being in a crowd and that's what Parker Palmer is talking about. It's not an active life that's the problem but it's this frenzy of constantly being with people and living on adrenaline just one activity to the next and just getting your heart stirred up and pumped constantly and trying to do so very much good in some cases that we then actually do harm to ourselves and even violence to the world in which we live. And I've seen that again and again with pastors who do not get rest and they simply live from one crowd and one activity to the next until they're wore out. And they make mistakes because they don't stop and get, like I've talked about, a compass reading, time with God, know where they're going. They must constantly be talking, this frenzy life. They want to be in the public constantly. And of course, there are opportunities again and again, especially if they're a very talented, gifted person. Well, I hope you get the idea. You can see the contrast here in other passages as well, commuting between two poles. We find that Jesus says, as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Even Jesus lived a limited time, a very limited time on earth. And the less time you have, you figure the more you have to cram into that limited time. Some of us may live to be old or long years uh, into our 70s, 80s, and maybe 90s. Just the same, life on earth is short. And there's a tendency to press everything into our lives that we possibly can. And also in, in ministry, to constantly be active, try to go more and more places, to spread ourselves thin. And the result is not good. But Jesus countered that activity with a quietness. As we've already read, he said, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. And we find this again and again with our Lord, that he provided for the disciples not only opportunities in public, in the crowds, but very solemn, wonderful times with himself and his father. Again, Parker Palmer has said the following, people caught in the gap between monasticism or monastic values and the demands of active life sometimes simply abandon the spiritual quest. They're caught between these two and, and one or the other, they just drop out. They just drop out. And most common is the problem of constantly being with people, at least with God's servants, ministers, professionals, but lay people as well in churches. And once you get some praise from people, you like to stay with the people and get that praise again and again. That's a very dangerous thing. Not that people thank you, 
not that people recognize that God is using you, but you, that you take it so seriously that you can't separate your, yourself from it. He goes on to say, and people who follow a spirituality that does not always respect the energies of actions are sometimes led into passivity and withdrawal and into a, a diminishment of their own spirits. spirits. Uh, you see the contrast here, and I've put it in different colors so you know it. There are those who are caught uh, between the two and, and uh, then they're very active, and then there are those who become very passive. Again, what God wants, I believe, is our commute between the active life and the private life. Energy spent in a crowd and then that which is absorbed from God, more often than not in a private setting, though we do get uh, much from people as well. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.